All right, welcome everybody uh, to this month's installment of the CATI 3D Experience User Group. I'm Todd Myers. I'm joined with uh, Bob McGoy, uh, Ritesh Dalal, and Keith Schaefer. Uh, we're going to be your presenters. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, an introduction to uh, project management. Ritesh is going to go through that with us, and uh, then we're going to follow that up with Bob McGoy, who's going to show us about uh, the 3D lean team player role. Um, so Keith, um, you want to go ahead and introduce the, uh, the subject uh, matter for the project management? Yeah, so generally when we look at the platform, j just from a, from a high level standpoint, we have two different applications that we would typically use for um, project management. Uh, one of them is the planner app, and I believe we've done that on one of the, the user groups, if I'm not mistaken, Todd. Um, so we, we've kind of gone over that once before, mm -hmm. um, but there's also a, uh, a full blown project management side to this as well. Um, this was a product that, that a lot of people haven't seen from, from the solid work side. Uh, it was primarily a, a direct, uh, it was something that we handled through the inflow side before the brand merger. I don't know if we, I, I think this is actually the first user group since the brand merger of inflow and CATI. Again, two two companies kind of uh, that always acted as one before and just kind of had different logos. It was um, so so now that we're all together under the CATI umbrella, uh, really the different brands or the different channels don't really matter. Um, we we've kind of gotten rid of any walls or silos that were in between them, um, and, and we want to talk a little bit more about the project management side of this. And and to do that, we brought in one of the specialists, Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh has, has implemented uh, the project management uh, portion of the platform on several different customers. Uh, he's a, a certified, uh, what, what would it be, the, the architect, the, uh, forget the name of it now. Maybe Ritesh can help me, but it's, it's the arch solutions architect there you go. Uh, through Dassault Systems, so on the, on the, on the CPE side of things. Um, and it does a, Ritesh does a lot of stuff when it comes to uh, implementing uh, both the project, uh, some requirement stuff, kind of that high level stuff uh, at customers um, uh, from an implementation standpoint. Uh, so we don't see him typically so much on the on the pre sale side. He's kind of the the guy that makes it all work after we uh, come in from the pre sale side and sells and sell things. Uh, so. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, Ritesh. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you kind of run through uh, project management, uh, and we'll go from there. Hey, Ritesh, I just made you presenter, so you should be able to share your screen and take it from there. Okay, sounds good. Can everybody hear me okay? Sure can. Okay. All right, let me get started. Uh, my name is Ritesh Dalal. Uh, I'm going to kind of introduce the project management application side of the 3D Experience platform. Uh, I do have a, a little bit in there just about project planner as a refresher if uh, you know anyone wants to know about that uh, since we did go through that in the past. So let me go in and share this. Give me a moment, I'm trying to switch the screens over here. As we go Very through good. this, Ritesh, I'll watch the uh, the Q and A in the chat. Sure. Just Anyone let me know. has questions? Feel free to throw it into the chat. I'll either uh, answer it through the chat, or I'll I'll save it till the end, and and we can discuss it with Ritesh. Okay. All right. Can you guys see the screen here? Yeah, we can. Okay. Very good. All right, so uh, project management, uh, you know, I just want to go through a very, very high level. Okay, just some of the features that are there and I'll kind of show you guys on on, on some of that and what it actually looks like. Um, so with project management, um, you have analytics, you can create budgets, you can track against those budgets, you can manage resources. Um, and by managing resources, I mean uh, resources as in uh, people that are uh, assigned to the project and how many hours they're working against the project how much they're budgeted to work against the project, things like that. Um, you can schedule meetings from within there. You can interact with all the members of the platform using a discussion object in there. 
Um, you can track all the decisions that are made about a project within the project management application as well uh, during each phase of the project. Um, you can create issues, which is a kind of a separate thing as well. Any issues that come up uh, in advance of the project, during the project, after the project, you can create them there and track against those issues. Um, you can outline any kind of opportunities that you expect to arise from the project, um, any risks that you expect to arise from the project or that have come about as you go uh, through the project. Um, you can create workspace, workspaces as well. Um, so you can kind of be a little more efficient to save some time. And then there's experiments what are kind of like what if scenarios. So you can go through an experiment. Again, I'll go through in detail about that so you guys can see what that looks like. But it's really creating a what if scenario, playing around with it. Once you get the results you want, you can implement that uh, in the project itself without affecting the project uh, through the process. So I'm going to throw a lot at you guys here in a short amount of time. So if you guys have questions, just make sure you put that in the chat. So real high, high level summary, um, this is kind of what a project summary report will look like, right? So when you log into project management, there's a project summary area. Um, any projects you have in the system will show up in the summary sheet here. Okay, it'll show you how many pending tasks you have for each project, any kind of pending deliverables for those projects, any issues that you've created for them. Um, if you create an assessment, okay, it'll show you the status of each assessment. Are you red, green, yellow on each of these areas on, on the resources side, schedule side, cost, budget, risk, so many different things there. Um, and your efforts as well on actual progress planned, things like that. So you can track where you're at in the project itself. So you have a lot of different opportunities. This is just a summary report that you'll see on the main screen when you pop into project management and it'll be all encompassing for all projects. You can also see that it shows you how many are upcoming in the next 30 days, how many are overdue, things like that as well. And we can, you can kind of configure some of that as well on what you want to see. Project dashboard, this is for a specific project. So once you're inside of a project, this is the dashboard you're going to see. So this is just an example. This is kind of what uh, I created a while back. So it, it gives you an idea for where you're at with this project. Okay. And that's under the schedule status tab. So you can go in, you can get an idea again, critical task, what's overdue, what's pending, um, deliverables, top level tasks, project status. There's a Gantt chart down there. I didn't scroll down, but you can, you, you'll get an idea that you can scroll down. You can see the entire uh, Gantt chart for the, the project from start to finish. See where you're at on each phase of the project uh, in terms of completion percentage. Um, and you also have an ability to see who is assigned what task as well. So you see that there's a tab there at the top that's called schedule status. There's another tab called business status. So this kind of gives you more of a business perspective on where you're at for the project. So your risk grid, okay, on where the risk lies in this project, any opportunities as well. Again, issues are tracked here, budgets are tracked here, benefits are tracked here, and I'll go into budgets and benefits here in a second. But budgets, I really didn't have much in this one, but if you do have several different areas for budget in terms of this is a long-term project, every month you have a different budget. Um, budgets can be based on uh, you know, resources or uh, equipment or software, or anything like that, right, that you have for the project. You can enter all that in, track against it, and you'll see everything at a high level right here. Okay, so you don't have to dive straight into the project to see all this, it's all in this kind of like this analytical view, I'd say. So this is kind of like a, a structured view to your project. There's many different views um, for project management. This is just one of them. And this is the most common one right now. So it's called the structured view when you're in here. This is where you can see your top level. So this project is called Lone Star Subassembly 1.0. And at that point, you can start creating separate tasks. Okay, so if you're going to have, you know, 20 different tasks that are going to be associated with this project, you can go in and start adding those tasks. I added a couple just to give you an idea um, for, for how that works. Um, so you can set that up here. You can have the deliverables set there. You can have the, your um, duration, start date, end date, everything is set here. Okay, so you can see the entire project and all the tasks associated with it, any deliverables all in this view. You can see it at all here. So this is just kind of showing you how the, the task gets created. Okay, so it, it's not, I don't want to dive into this too much, but 
you have the ability, like I said, to add tasks. I just zoomed in a little bit so you can see that you just use that icon, you go in, you select your task. Um, there's a bunch of icons there at the top as well. You can add people to it, you can add deliverables to it, you can add um, dependencies to it, which I'm gonna go into in a second here. And you also have those other views of a flattened view, a Gantt chart view, a milestone view. So if you wanna see all the milestones associated, you can click on milestones and you'll see all that. That's something you would set up from the beginning. So once this project, you've added all the tasks, everything's been added, you then have the ability to promote that to a ready state. Right now it's in a preliminary state. You have the ability to set it to a ready state and then you're ready to go with that project. This is about adding dependencies, okay? So uh, it, it just in this example, it's just to give you an idea that there's the ability to add dependencies. Um, there's different kinds of predecessor types. Um, you can do finish to start, start to finish, finish to finish, start to start. Um, there's different opportunities. If you have Slack time in between, you can enter that there as well. Um, so it's kind of like Microsoft Project, if you guys have worked with that before. Uh, very similar in that sense that you can have your Slack time and you can have your dependencies. So you can do the same thing here. Um, and it's very easy to do that. And then I'll have a slide here that'll go into kind of the details, okay? Um, so dependencies can be added for any kind of task, um, which is in the create or assign state. Um, it has to be in a create or assign state, the task, if it's past that, you cannot add a dependency for it. Um, and it just kind of, I don't want to go in detail here, but you, you can see your predecessor types on what they really mean. Uh, this is pretty common terminology, I think, for project management. Um, and then Slack time, again, it's pretty common uh, common there um, on just a number of days in between uh, tasks. You can enter that as well. Hey, Keith, do we have any questions right now but, uh, while I kind of, before I get into the next part? No, I think you're good so far. Okay. Um, and again, this is just an analytical view. I kind of showed you this already, but I didn't show you the full Gantt chart view. So this is just giving you a full overview of what it's going to look like once you're in the schedule status tab of your project. So as soon as you click on your project, you're in there, this is what you see. Okay. And you can see that Gantt chart view. You can see what's been completed or how long it's expected to take. So right now there's a couple tasks that haven't been completed at all, but there's, it's more of the overall project going from uh, 2020 all the way into 2021, right? You can see that and track against it. Uh, so that's a good view of, of where you're at in the project as well. Ritesh, these are all hyperlinked together, right? So if I wanted to see all the light tests, I can just click on that and it'll show me all of them. You got it. Yep, exactly. So if you want to see this stuff, you can. These are all, everything is hyperlinked. So you can access all of these items right from here. You don't need to go into a separate tab and click on task and then click on that specific. You can do it straight from here. That's the beauty of this. It's it's all kind of interactive. It's not just a, a static view. Um, project risks. Um, so this is again, uh, I'd mentioned in the beginning, you can create any risks associated with a project uh, up front. Um, you can, uh, they're created really to identify and solve any kind of problems encountered during the progress of the project. And in some cases, like I said earlier, problems that are expected to occur before starting. So you can go in, assign all your risks right from the get-go. You can put them in even as you mature in the project. Um, and you can kind of go through the life cycle of that risk. I, I don't, and we don't have the time right now to go in the details of how risks work, but I want you to know that that is uh, an option as well uh, and commonly used as well. Resource plans and pools. So these, this is a, a really nice feature um, that the, the platform has, has kind of come with um, for project management. So this gives you the ability to create something called a resource plan and a resource pool. So each, again, by resource, I'm talking about uh, mainly employees, okay? So people that are going to be assigned to the project and working on the project. So each resource request is gonna detail what skills are needed, okay, for the project and what resource pools would be needed as well. And a resource pool is really a, a list of people that uh, have a specific skill set that you can choose from, okay? So you would set that up or, uh, initially in the environment. Um, and then as you move along and, and they have projects, you can find a resource pool that fits your need. And then you're even able to select a person from that resource pool as well, okay? So the resource request is when you go into the project, 
Okay, you're going to click on resource management and you're going to create your resource pool. You have the ability then from the project to select the pool and to select a specific person. And then that would then create a request for the project saying, hey, I want person A to be working on this project for, you're going to say how many hours you're expected uh, for them to work on that project and how much the cost, what the budgeted cost is for that person. And you can see on the far right, you can see that request right there. So it's REQ 100 right? Uh, the skills needed are CAD skills. The resource pool is selected there called company and then the standard cost per hour. Okay. And it's telling you that it needs one full-time employee for the month of May. So it gives you an idea for what's being requested now. Once that report, once that gets accepted, now that person is now assigned to the project and they can enter in a timesheet as they work on items within the project. So if they're doing a deliverable and they've worked on it, they can then go into their timesheet, track against this project, put in how much they worked, save that, that would then go to the resource manager and they'd look at that and approve it. And now that would be a tracked against the budget. Okay, so you know how many hours that person worked on that project, how many they were budgeted and how many actually worked. So this is a really cool feature to, to kind of get an idea. In addition, you have the ability to understand like who's assigned to what. So if you wanna select a specific person, you can see what projects they're assigned to and how much they're allocated to different projects. So you can understand, oh, they don't look like they're available. They're on two other projects right now. I don't have that availability. I have to select someone else. So this helps you manage your, your load of people. This is a great way to see over allocation as well, correct? Yep. That's yeah, that's exactly so what I was you trying can to get. See if, yeah. if you're overloading your employees and could could, you know, from an engineering standpoint, give you the justification to say I need to add a team member. Yep. And it gives you an idea for um, you know, what skills you might not have within. So you can understand that, hey, you know, for CAD, I only have these two people and they're always booked. Right, I need to develop some of these people. So it gives you an idea for kind of what's being underdeveloped with internally as well and what you might need to work sure. with. Sure. I can go on and on. Resource pools are a really great tool. Um, I would definitely, you know, if you guys, if anyone does uh, go into project management, that's something that you definitely want to look into and, and utilize. Um, budgets, pretty, pretty commonly used again. So you can see here, um, everyone's familiar with what budgets are, right? Um, so it lets you understand your cost. Um, you can go in, so the budgets are set up initially when you create the project. Um, you'll go in, you'll select um, your budget. I think you have the ability to select it by month or quarter, or uh, I believe by week as well. So week, month, and quarter, you can set up your budget. And uh, you have the ability to set that up. Once it's all set up and uh, done, you can freeze that budget, and now that budget's done. You can't touch that budget. All you can do at that point then is track against it. So as things are consumed, you would go in, and there's an area in here where you can enter in actual consumption, what was used, when was it used, how much was used, things like that, and it'll start tracking against it. And you'll see that in your analytics then when it pulls up, so you can track against. Benefits, same type of thing, okay? So these, it's the same type of thing as budgets um, in, in formatting concept, um, except benefits are really just exactly that, right? What benefits are gonna come out of this project? Are there any benefits you're expecting? Uh, maybe more sales orders or maybe cash improvement or maybe less inventory on hand or whatever it may be. Um, so you have that ability to track against that, uh, entering your benefits on when you're looking and expecting to see that benefit and then start tracking against it. Again, these are all, uh, it, it may seem uh, tedious in some sense that, hey, this is a lot of info to enter in, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's a great way to look at where, where you know, how did the project turn out? You know, uh, these, these things are really important, you know, after you finish up a project to see where the benefits really came, where the opportunities came, you know, what kind of risk came so you guys can learn from that uh, on the next project. Uh, and experiments, okay? So experiments, again, are the same type of, it's what I said again earlier, it's a what if scenario. So an experiment uh, enables a project lead to do a what if analysis on an in work project, okay, without altering the main project. So if you create a what if scenario, you can alter that, mess around the schedule, the resources, everything in there, the budgeting, all those things, right? You can track against it. 
And then once you get the results that you want, then you can merge those results back into the main project. Okay, so the main project doesn't get affected at all during the whole process. If you never attain the results, well, then that experiment was exactly that, just an experiment, and you don't do anything with it. So you have that ability as well. And then this is just a, a just a quick snapshot of this for, for you guys in case uh, you didn't attend the last one. Um, but this is just project planning. Okay, so there is an application Keith had mentioned in the beginning. There's a project planning application that uh, I would say uh, the project management side of it uh, that we just went through is pretty all inclusive. You can do everything from there. It's pretty robust. Um, project planning is um, more aligned. It is very uh, user friendly. Uh, a, a widget, but it allows you to enter in tasks, look at your schedule, look at add in members, and assign you know uh, members to specific tasks and things like that. So it's a it's a cool little way to to perform tasks and assign tasks in a very simple, easy format. So it's just kind of showing you. So this this main uh, screen there on the upper left is your project dashboard. Okay, um, inside of the uh, project planning app. And the bottom right is really your task screen. Okay, so when you have any tasks, you can see them right there. And like I said, it's pretty easy to work around, and you can drag and drop them the tasks as you complete them. Um, and it's very simple and easy to see what's been done, what's in work, and what's been completed for each task. I think that's it. Yep, I tried to zoom through that for everyone. So I have a I have a couple of questions that have come up, Ritesh. Yep. Um, and I, I just can't type fast enough, so I think I know the answer to most of them, but uh, we'll kind of walk through these together. So uh, the first one, uh, if a task is created outside the project management tool, can it be added to the project later? So uh, in Planner, you can. Actually, you can create uh, outside of the, uh, the swim lane and drag and drop it into the Planner. Uh, if we're talking about a project, um, the project task and uh, a collaborative task are two different things. Um, now you could create uh, and add to tasks after the fact, provided that the phase of the project that you're working inside of isn't already in work. Um, and the reason that we typically lock down the project once it hits in work is that it, pre it prevents us from having scope creep on a project. So if you're always able to add a task, as things come up, you'll just keep adding it and adding it and adding it. And while in some cases that's not a bad thing, in other cases it leads to a scope creep that may put you out of, out of scope in the project in general. Mm -hmm. um, so you can add tasks after the fact, and generally that's why most of the projects that I create, I create them in phases, because I will put phase one into in work, and phase two and three probably are still um, being defined. So, so th they're, they're loosely defined, but I can still add tasks to it. I can add subtasks uh, and whatnot. Um, does that, I, hopefully that answers the question. Um, the second question, uh, can you assign tasks to a group and anyone in the group can pick it up? So you can assign tasks to a group, however, uh, what I find more convenient is when we talked about that resource loading, um, we would we would take generally take a a project and say each task uh, has to be done by either let, let's say for example a project manager or a CAD manager or a drafter, um, and we would we would take those tasks and label them like that, right? And then when you go into the resource management portion of it. Um, and say that I want to create a resource, uh, or I want to create, uh, I want to pull from a resource pool. It will find those items in the resource pool that are under allocated and pull them into your project. So it'll automatically find the resource for you in that scenario. Um, can it trigger events like review routes? So you can potentially trigger events like review routes. However, and I, I don't know, Ritesh, I, I don't mean to steal your thunder here. Yes. So, um, I personally, and maybe you have a different way of doing this, Ritesh, 
I like to kind of go the opposite way. Uh, what I do is I typically create a task inside my project. And on that task, let's say the task is um, to release, release a CAD model, right? Um, and then I'll take a, a change action and make it the deliverable of the task. So you can actually assign a deliverable to the task and link them together. And that change action basically is given to uh, my CAD user to say, this is the change action that I want you to release your CAD files under. And so what ends up happening is you end up with a roll up effect. When the CAD models get created uh, and released, they're released through that change action. That change action will go to complete and when the change action goes to complete, it will automatically find that task associated with it in the project. And it'll mark that task complete as well. And so what you end up with is you could end up with um, multiple items where CAD users are, you know, it's assigned to different CAD users. And as they finish all these tasks, um, it's automatically rolling up um, the, uh, the, the finished product into the into the project so that when you look at these dashboards, you get a real time look at your project. It's not a snapshot in time like like Ritesh was saying earlier um, that these are all hyperlinked together. They're not static dashboards. It's looking at at that data real time. And so I get a real time roll up of all the tasks and where they're at as opposed to right now you're probably walking around saying hey where are you on this where are you on this where are you on this um or you're having a, a meeting that has to pull everyone together just to get a status of, of where things are um by rolling these up into tasks of as part of the project i can look at my dashboard and see where everything's at it's a double-edged sword because i can also come back to that project and realize why things aren't progressing i can see late tasks right Ritesh, would you agree? I I don't know if that's the way you typically handle the triggered events. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean that 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 is the you know I would say uh, preferred way to do things. So um, I want to throw out there real quick. Um, well, we have we have like a minute and a half. Um, I don't know if you guys have have seen FDO seven that came out this week. Um, the the review routes that you're talking about here um, and those routed tasks, you can now create their templates right from uh, the routes widget inside of FD07. And all of those uh, approval tasks now get rolled up into a change action. There's an extra tab on the change action that will show you all of the approval tasks and that grid view uh, of all of the tasks that need to be completed uh, for the change action approval. So some good stuff that came out earlier this week. I mean, we're two days ago. Well, mm -hmm. I think it happened over the weekend. So yeah, technically Saturday. Saturday. Yep. Um, yeah. But some of that stuff has, has directly to do with triggered events and approvals uh, for those reviews. Well, before we s switch gears, um, there one other question came in um, during that. Q and A session there, um, and the question is: Is it possible to overlay two project schedules on each other to see what happens when a project deviates from the plan? Rutesh, yeah. do you want this? Or do you want yeah. me to take that one? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you want to take it, you can. But yes, I mean, that's kind of that what if scenario. Yep. That's that experiment. Yes, that's exactly what that's for. Yeah, so the what if would allow me to say, okay, instead of instead of machining this part and the machining is going to take a week, what if I buy? What if I purchase it? Yep. What does that do to my schedule, and what does that? How does that affect my overall project? Yeah, and that's that experiment feature. So that's uh, that is the exact definition. So what you're asking is, yes, it is in the in the platform. Great. Well, if anyone thinks of any other questions about uh, the project management role or any of those apps that we just saw, feel free to continue to put those in the chat. We can address them at the end of this session today. Um, Bob, I've just made you presenter. If you want to share your screen and take the stage here, 
to talk to us about lean team player. Um, that'll be the second part of our presentation today. And uh, we'll also show you uh, some QR codes that you can take a screenshot of to get connected to the uh, CATI 3D experience user group, um, the, the, the swim community that we host where you can interact with us directly and ask questions and get feedback. Um, uh, and then we'll just get Bob here set up to take it away. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Um, can everybody hear me okay? You yes. sound good. Okay. So I'm just going to take the next few minutes here and do a very quick high review of what is 3D play, uh, what is 3D lean team player. So just a quick quick thing. I mean, a lot of us have been talking about different apps and things, but they're all part of the 3D experience works group. Um, we've got SolidWorks and Novius, Simulia, Delmia, 3D Excite, and you can see where those kind of fit in. When it comes to us planning on a daily basis, um, you can see that, I mean, when we're planning a project, we're planning that project, we're developing that project, and we're releasing that project. And there's lots of different roles and lots of different brands that can fit into that cycle. We're really good as SOLIDWORKS users on that development and some of that release when we go to manufacturing. But there's two other brands, Delmia and Inovia, which um, Ritesh just did a really good job of talking about project management. That's an Inovia tool. I'm gonna to talk about a Delmia tool called 3D Lean Team Player. And the idea here is Spend, spend very focused time with your team, get things done and be productive, okay? And the nice thing about that is, it doesn't matter if your office is 20 miles away, you do an hour commute every day, or if your office is five feet away from your bedroom and that's your commute. You can participate in these meetings on basically any device. Okay, so when it comes to our meetings, we have three different stages. We have our preparing stage, our meeting stage, and the follow up that comes from that. So, typically, if I was on the platform, I would go and I maybe look at a post. Somebody posted something and say, hey, you know, that's a good, a good topic. Let's go ahead and have a go ahead and have a meeting about that. So, the person that's going to get ready for that meeting has some work to do. And I'm gonna show you how to do that work in just a minute with the tool. So in a few minutes, we're gonna be able to set up some information that we can share with the team. Everyone can interact with it. And you don't have those scenarios where you have the people that are completely silent, and then you have the, com the people that completely monopolize a meeting, like I do. I, I, I am notorious for monopolizing the meeting. Thank you, Todd, for laughing. So, I thought it was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for staying unmuted. So the idea here is to get together and get ready. So that way, when we have the meeting, we're very pointed. So let's hop over, and I'm going to do this, not by the magic of Judah Child here. We're going to do this live. So these are some of the dashboards that I have available, and Todd's actually a member of one of the dashboards today. So I'm going to go into my getting started board. This board, if, if I'm the person hosting the meeting, I just need to come in and start putting together some boards very quickly. So what we do is inside of our meeting, we come in and we say, I'm gonna customize this, and what kind of widget do I want on my board? Well, I could put a dry erase board up there. I could put in, one of my favorites is an action log and a problem log. I could also put, Oh, go ahead, Todd. And as Bob is doing this, I've got this up on my screen. It's it's updating live. As soon as he drops another board on his screen, it's updating to my screen. Uh, I can interact with this simultaneously with Bob. Yep. So if I if I need to play back a video of something or I want to put in something from a web page, I can do that as well. 
And as I click on these, I can come in and say, let's, let's look at this. Um, let's look at my PDF viewer. I can come in and say, I'd like to go to the documents of that. Maybe grab a PDF, which I don't think I've got one here. So let's go ahead and grab a graph paper PDF for right now. But this could be any PDF that we want to talk about. This could be work instructions. This could be um, product summary, whatever it is that we want to talk about during the meeting. And these these meetings, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are meant for uh, quick uh, get togethers with the team just to make sure everyone's on track with what they're supposed to be doing. Correct. And you could use this as like a regular like morning meeting to get everyone going and make sure they're on task and, and know what what happened yesterday, what to look out for in so the future. If you ever been on a shop floor and you do like a flash five or a flash 15, a flash 30 meeting, they're 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 abiding by the lean premise of everyone gets around a a dry erase board and you start throwing post-it notes up and everyone's interactive with it. So like right here, if I come into this particular sketch, this sketch, if I customize it, could be any number of things. It could be um, an EHS cross for, for a safety cross. This could be, say, um, my five whys. I could grab a five whys on there. I could grab a hold of an Ishikawa board um, for problem solving. So when we come in here, that becomes my background. I think I grabbed the wrong button there. Give me one second. One selection, there we go. And that would be my background. Just like this is my background in this meeting right here. So I could come in and say, well, I need to get ready for the meeting. I'm going to get everything set up. And as I come in here, I can say, what is my agenda going to be? So I can come back to the top level here. And let's go ahead and we're going to click on. Oh, got one button click too early there. So we're going to go to my meeting button here and I can start picking the things that I need to talk about off the shoot. So the first thing I want to make sure is all my team is there. Then we want to get started with our meeting. We can talk about actions and problems we're experiencing. So here I'm going to go with problem log first and action log. Maybe I'll establish a KPI, which is the number that we put in. And then the best part about this is I can set how long the meeting is going to be. Especially with, with me running a meeting, it's always going to run long. So having a clock going all the time helps out. So here, in a few minutes, you've picked the background you want for your images, you pick the information that you want to do, and then you start working with your team. And they start interacting with that board. So if I come in here, and let's just say, before I set my meeting up, I am going to do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and change my background real quick. Keep hitting customize. I've got my mouse mapped to a different size here. So just give me one second. So I'll go ahead and insert a picture here of the shop floor. And let's go ahead and set that to my background. So at this point, I could start my meeting and this could be different workstations that people are working on. So I'm going to go ahead and get the meeting started here. So we're going to go with, let's get started. We're going to go see who's here. We're going to start our sketch. On that, we're going to talk about our problems, and then we're going to go through actions. And let's go ahead and get started. So on Todd's dashboard, he can now see 
our first slide because he has a copy of this. Is that correct, John? That's right. So now that that's going, I can go over to my tools and I can put post-it notes on. I can assign people to those, or I can just put a sticker on things. So the best thing here is I can come in and say, part with scratches. That's a problem. Now I can grab a hold of that, make that bigger, put that wherever I want to. And then we can just start coming in and doing different things. So let's say on my team, I really want to make sure that Todd's a part of that. So I'm going to drag and drop that and it basically make Todd responsible for that. Now, as I'm going through the meetings, you can see up here, going back to that meeting, we still have the agenda going on. I can flip through the different boards so I can see, well, Ritesh is here, Randy's not here, Bob's here, Todd's here. Let's go to the next sketch. Okay, who's working on the shop floor today? Well, I'm gonna be over here. Well, Randy's somewhere over here right now because he's not here. Ritesh is going to be over here, and Todd's going to be over here. Those are workstations for the day. Now, I can come in and say, well, we had a problem come up. Tom got hurt. That's something we don't like to have. That's not a good problem to have. So then we can go through and say, well, that's an issue that we need to establish some, some action items on. So that's where we can go back to the, that other sketch and maybe even put in another image Pull that over, make that a little smaller. And now we can start talking about right on this, this blackboard, this digital blackboard, was that a manpower issue? Could it be? Well, that's a potential action. What's that action? Well, maybe we need to talk with Tom. And basically use this as a brainstorming operation to see what makes sense. Right, you could see what safety issues need to be yep. addressed. Um, is it a process issue? Those yeah, is it a, a training, right? A training uh, issue. And a lot of this, Bob, you could do, you could pre-fill even yep. before the meeting, right? So that exactly. you spend a few minutes preparing what you're gonna go through. And then when you have the actual meeting, you can just blow right through everything and you can add post-it notes where you need to and so, and so forth. So what's, what's nice about this, not only can you throw those post-it notes out there, you can kind of come in and say, well, where are things related? So if I were to say, maybe it's, um, it's just general process. Maybe it's, it's the robot. Maybe that's the problem. Grab the robot, throw it over there. Maybe it's dust in the air, whatever it is. But I can come in and start drawing on that if I need to. No, maybe yes. I don't know. But I can also come in here and say, well, I really just need to get that off there. So basically, it gives you a digital whiteboard. But but Todd, can can you hop onto this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So so actually, this is a nice thing for those people that don't want to pipe up. They can come in and Todd's already got some post-it notes over here. So that gives you the ability to, if you don't wanna actually talk during a meeting, you can start grabbing notes and start putting them into the meeting and people can see that real time. Yeah, and Where, you can drag and drop them onto the actual issues so that they are linked to them. Yes. So if I come back over here and I pan back over to this, 
these are all problems. So maybe an action I need is more training. If I could spell. So that's an action. Now, who's going to have that? I don't want to do that. I'm going to make Ritesh do that. And then I can say, well, let's drop that right on top of the problem. And when I look at the problem, you can see any number of actions that were associated with the problem, which I think is pretty sweet. The other thing here, if I come back in and let's go ahead and put another note in here, let's say you need a dust collector. If I click on the note, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see I can edit that. I can attach a screenshot. I can make it larger, smaller, delete it. But my favorite is the fact that you can come in and make that into a collaborative task with a button click. And the idea of these meetings is to give you short, focused bursts of a five to 10 minute meeting and then move on. Then the, those tasks could be short term tasks that are in your collaborative tasks, or those can be drug into project planner that we discussed last time. So I could say, well, I'm going to assign that to me and I'm also going to be the task owner. Send that. And if I get out of full screen here. So now I'm back at my dashboard for a second and I'll refresh this widget. There is my collaborative tasks and dust collector just got put into my list of to things to do. So if I need to, like Ritesh was talking about earlier, maybe that's a long-term goal that we need to add to the project. I can drag it and drop it right into my project planner and that is going to spool up into my project planner tool. So now if we go to the next tab here, you can see we got any number of things that are going on here. We've got a list of problems. Well, some of these problems could be things that we need to deal with or maybe not. Well, the big problem here is we have we have scratches. We haven't identified what the action required is yet. Now, we could say, well, I need to get a robot. That one's already closed, and you can see that's locked out. These all stay on until you're done with them. So, so you just drag and drop those over. Then when we come into our actions, you can see that we have actions that are waiting to happen. Are they going to happen today, tomorrow, next week, or what's next? So you can simply just go ahead and start dragging and dropping those on and at any given time, go back in and edit those. You can add context, basically pictures. You can add a sketch right inside of that. So at that point, you can see I'm at zero minutes left and I'm actually running over on my time. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit restore here. Actually, not restore. We'll get out of our meeting. We'll go ahead and stop the meeting there. So problem actions and problem inactions are kind of nice. KPIs are kind of interesting. So you can come in here and this could be how much make ready time did you have this week? How many, how much downtime did you have? You can come in and customize this and it's just a quick and simple thing that you're going to report on. So you come in and you give it a max and min value. How, how many days a week you're actually going to report on it? And is there an upper and lower limit that is acceptable? And what is that value? So you give it your, your target values. So if I say maybe I need 13 instead of titles, we can say meetings with customers. 
Now I come in and I say, well, today's number. And basically every day you can come in and start reporting new numbers and over time you track it. This is just a manual tool right now. Eventually in the future, we're going to uh, have this. So this can real time pull data from other locations. But right now it's just a quick down and dirty number that we, th we throw into the KPI. There's a few others in here that are very helpful. We can do 3D play. Um, I prefer just to have 3D play over here on the on the left hand side. That's just my personal preference. So that way I can bring that up during the meeting. Um, you can also do we talked about the PDF viewer, the picture viewer. The big difference between the picture viewer and the sketch, the in the sketch, you can put as many pictures as you want in there as background images and scale them, squash them, stretch them. The picture viewer is there just to show that image full screen. So, so we have any questions pop over here, Tom? Yeah, we had a question come in um, and that person left, but we can contact them to give them the answer too. But for the group, um, are these meeting boards intended to be saved or really just a temporary thing since probably used for daily meetings? So the, the idea with this would be that the dry erase board that you have in that room for that meeting that's constantly ongoing. So the last thing you want is someone to accidentally come in and wipe that, that dry erase board off and have a separate meeting. So what you can do is if we go all the way to home, you can have a different board for different meetings. So each board is a continuation of the previous. And the idea is that the information that's stored in here is to be accessible to the whole team. So throughout yes. the day in your PDF viewer, you may have work instructions, right? Yep. And instead of having the team dig through their, you know, their, uh, their network, looking for the documents that control their work that day, they can just come up here and tap the screen and see what they're supposed to be doing. Yep. They can follow the procedures. They can review the quality and safety work instructions and just quickly get going throughout the day. And the, the big part about this is it used to be that there was like three different roles that you'd have to have to participate in this. And they, it made more sense to combine those into one role. So if you have three, the 3D lean player, you have full access to it. So if, if you're a member of the board that day um, and the person that normally does the meetings out, you have full ability to set that meeting up and run that meeting. There is no administrator for the boards. As long as you're a part of it, you can start the meeting and run it, which is it sets everybody on the equal playing field. But the other nice thing about it is it can be basically done on any device. So because it's in that web browser, you can participate on your phone. Um, I probably want a little bit more real estate. I probably want at least an iPad, but you can do 3D lean on an iPad. You can do it on a Chromebook. It really doesn't matter because you're really not installing anything. So, so the big thing there is it gives you that ability to have pointed meetings, being able for everyone to be able to drag and drop ideas and thoughts into one environment and be on an equal playing field of your ability to communicate with the rest of the team. And the idea there is you only need the 3D Lean player, and if you have Project Planner, you can drag those collaborative tasks that you generate from 3D Lean into Project Planner. And the other thing is just needing Collaborative Industry Innovator to access that that check in, check out data that you're going to want to access during for this as well. And, and the idea is that when everyone on that team is engaged with this tool, um, everyone's going to be more productive. They're going to be working safer. The quality is going to increase uh, and that's going to lead to less cost in manufacturing. 
or, or doing yeah. whatever the task that needs to be um, handled at the time. So um, it can benefit the whole organization in a lot of different ways. So the, the gentleman who came up with the lean principles was very adamant about everyone in the team understanding what ev what was going on with the whole project. Not just their subset, but being able to see it as a whole. And that's where this, this lean team player can come into play because you can invite other members that may not be a CAD designer, may not be um, a PDM person into the mix and be able to see what's going on with that project at a higher level and understand what's going on. So I know I've kind of went over a little bit on time there. Um, if, if you haven't already, if you want to be part of the users groups going forward, you can grab this QR code and it'll pop you over to the page to register for the next users group meeting. If you have questions about anything 3D experience related, it could be CAM, manufacturing, it could be simulation, it could be data management, it could be the X apps, how do we design stuff inside of a web browser? Feel free to send an email to that link right there. Uh, myself, Todd, Randy, a few others on the team are watching that email on a daily basis and as questions come across, we answer those directly ourselves. So feel free to, to shoot one over over there. And we can also get you connected to that user group community. Um, why don't you uh, go back to that first QR code, Bob? Just let that hang on the screen here for a few minutes. Um, yeah. uh, there you go. And uh, I don't see any other questions coming in, but if anyone has any thoughts right now, feel free to type them in the chat. We've got a minute or two here left that we can take to answer those. So we've been uh, we've been utilizing this tool internally for some of our meetings, um, uh, and we see that it's a, a great way to just stay up to date with everything that's happening and you know what the what the short term needs are. Yep. So Keith has been running those meetings for us lately. Um, Keith, do you do you have anything to add or any anything that you you've seen that you wanted to bring up? I actually think that Keith just had to. To jump out for a demo. Okay. So, well, there you go. That, that's his answer. <laughs> so, all right, everyone. Well, we did record this meeting, so we will post that on the web page, which is this QR code that you're seeing on the screen. Uh, that's the landing page for the CATI 3D Experience User Group. You can go there, sign up, look at what's on the agenda. Next month, we're going to be doing some more Del Mia with some CAM tools. And then we're going to look at one of the cloud design tools called um, X design. It comes with the 3D creator role and that's your parametric uh, design tool that runs strictly in the cloud. You do not need a workstation class um, rig uh, to run that app and uh, you're working the cloud, saving in the cloud and any of that data you create can also be used in other environments, other design tools in the cloud or even with SolidWorks. So, um, Stay tuned, come back next month, second Wednesday of every month, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you uh, then.